What? Jinx, no underwear in this house. I have to edit this <laughs> yeah. a little bit. Remember the abacus? Is that a bird? Not racist. Not sorry. It's the Q and A with my boyfriend. Yeah. His name is Abrar. Hope it's I, okay. I mentioned that. That's okay. I think I've already said it before. So I don't know if I should say who said it. No. I'm just gonna say the question because if in case they didn't want their name to be said, which yeah. I totally understand. Okay. okay, who wears the pants of the relationship? Uh, I take them off sometimes, and actually she takes them off sometimes and allows me to wear them. <laughs> no, <I'm kidding. laughs> uh, we we just uh, we wear the same pair of pants every day. We share um, pants. We try to share pants. We we just have different strengths. To offer like different skill set like there's everybody's different I was just gonna set, say that right but we just sort of we try and balance our goal is balance yeah. <laughs> next um which one of you does the cooking uh mostly for, him but both of us yeah I think you're much better cook than you give yourself credit for he's a phenomenal cook no, that's not true. phenomenal I think you're and teaching me how to eat spicy food I always suffer yeah. <laughs> Who farts in their sleep? Uh, I do a lot. <laughs> but we comfortably fart in front of each yeah, other. Yeah, I don't mind a fart. It's a perfectly normal, normal thing to do. Normal. Normal. But yeah, farting's good. <laughs> we, we've actually had a fart competition once. <laughs> How long were you together before you farted in front of each other? Well, we were like together basically from yeah, the start. The start. <laughs> we just felt like happen. connected. Yeah. And then we were gonna do it at the same time. <laughs> yeah, and then she didn't do it. And no. No, yes, that's what happened. That is what I, I thought it was you didn't do You're it. right, you're right. You so didn't do it. we were like yeah. one, two, three, and I was like, no. And he farted, and it was oh, so great. funny. And he's like, what the fuck? And I was like, okay, no, I'm sorry. And then I did it. Yeah. <laughs> it was they go squeaky on them. <laughs> Who leaves the underwear on the floor? No, yeah. I don't have wear underwear. I'm too OCD. I, there's a reason. It's a, it's a bunching issue. I've accepted it. It's okay. <laughs> I don't mind it. Does your boyfriend leave black socks under the bed that used to drive my ex-girlfriend bonkers? Why black socks? Maybe that's Can't what he wears. Stuff. Socks. I leave black socks. But not just socks, right? Like, I leave everything yeah. everywhere. <laughs> yeah, it's great. Like, she'll leave something and I'll pick it up. Those are my mechanisms to cope with my stress. When I'm like... Do some activities. And I just, you know, I'll see stuff on the floor. I'm like, perfect. And if I it. start helping, he's like, stop, stop, go sit down. Yeah, I was like, no. Go no. relax. And I'm like, Man, what? <laughs> okay. How long have you guys been together? You look so happy. That's, That's pretty cute. cute. <laughs> <laughs> Jinx. What was it? We started talking and well, we talked January, in December. You're right. For like a couple of, <laughs> couple of times and then started really talking in January. Right next to my birthday. Online yes. Birthday. So we we talked twice. Wait, how okay, let's just say how long we've been together. Technically, what do we consider it? January 22nd. Second, yeah. We'll explain the story after cuz some of the questions um pertain to that. So, how long have we been together for? That makes four and a half months? Yep. Okay. Yeah. Remember the abacus? Abacus? No. What is that? It was like that thing with um Is that a bird? And then it helped you count? Like the Chinese, I think, created it. I don't know. Really? I don't know. Abacus doesn't sound Chinese. Okay. Not racist. Yeah. Okay, next question. Okay, should we just go to how did you guys meet? Yeah. Let's just do that one. Yeah. <laughs> it's just no. a long story, but it's a really cute story. Yeah. So we met on... Do you want me to explain Yeah, it? yeah. So I was on Bumble, you know, just a regular brown guy in a white world. <laughs> I was like, let's go to Bumble. Let's try to find, uh, you know, somebody nice to chill with originally. And then... So I matched with Lori, um, I think in December or like it was right before Christmas and I had a lot going on and then I matched with her. Can I interject first? Yes. I wanted to add that it was my first time using Bumble and it was just like, why not? Because I'd always been dating people, <laughs> it's like serial dating. It's very common with like BPD, uh, borderline personality. Anyways, that was one of my coping mechanisms. So I ended up breaking up with the person I was dating and that's why I was like you know what I'm going on Bumble I've never done it before and so it was my first time and I'm just swiping through and a bra's like I was just captivated so yeah, yeah. so we, we matched and then 
um, I think right we, away. we we did yeah so we matched right near Christmas so when somebody matches with you you have to respond back in 24 hours or otherwise the chat expired so it expired I was about like to oh shut... he's not interested whatever yeah, and I was about to <laughs> shut down Bumble I just wanted to take a break but then I saw her and I was like <laughs> and I wanted to talk to her and I was like you know like she seems interesting on Bumble if the chat expires you have to like pay like maybe it was like 10 bucks and you have to get coins and you have to use those coins right it was 10 bucks or something. That's or, how much I cost. You know, because it was like, it was at, <laughs> it was basically asking me, it's like, oh, do you want to like, you know, reconnect with her? I was like, yeah, sure. And then, then I had to pay for it. I kind of have to put that in my, um, you know, um, list of good things that I did in life. And I messaged her and I'm like, hey, and then she responded back. Like, you know, you, I think you were still trying. Yeah, so I decided with the person I was dating to give it like one final shot. Yeah. <laughs> so that's what I said to Abrar because yeah. he messaged me and I, what did I say? Do you remember? I don't remember exactly, but then I told you, I'm like, oh, no worries. Like, you know, you should definitely try it out. Like, I, and I was like, I'm hoping that, you, that, not that I'm hoping that you don't, like, are not able to succeed at whatever you're trying to do, but I am kind of hoping. So the month after that, when you kind of messaged me, it was right next to my birthday, we were like, hey, you still around? I'm like, I didn't know it was uh, his yeah, birthday. It was uh, his yeah, birthday. It was his uh, yeah. birthday. The day before his birthday. Yeah. The 22nd. And then you... That's when we consider we got together. <laughs> Yeah, I, I didn't expect to literally go on to Bumble the first time and find someone so fast. And everyone thought I was crazy. <laughs> so like, okay, Lori's just, you know, who's the next guy? But it was interesting because the first conversation, he said to me, um, how was your Christmas holidays? I think something yeah, like that. Yeah. And I was like, well, I'm Jewish. And so what did I say? You say like, we don't really celebrate oh, it. Like we just, but I still enjoy it. Like yeah, it's a fun like, season uh, or whatever. Okay. <laughs> and he was Jewish. There goes the ten bucks. <laughs> he thought that I was gonna like not be I was interested. Like, oh, shit. Because he comes from a family, or like, how do you explain it? I mean, for me, like, I just I come from family. That I don't identify myself as a as a Muslim. Right? I identify as a humanist or like a spiritual person. Or okay, both of go. our profiles said spiritual. That's the thing. Like, I'm not I'm not religious either. Like, I come from a Jewish family. I'm all about peace and connection and sort of breaking down those barriers between you know the the stigma and stereotypes and etc that exists in the world and religion is definitely one of them peace peace out we're all about peace okay. <laughs> does bpd have a big effect on your relationship if so how do you manage it y'all cute as f <laughs> okay uh bpd is borderline personality disorder for those who don't know so my moods are quite volatile, meaning like up, down, up, down, and when they happen, they're very extreme. So if, let's say, this is sort of baseline of how most, like, just feeling, you know, average, you know, no extreme emotion, most people kind of like fluctuate sort of, you know, around that line. They have ups, they have downs, they pass, kind of like the weather. Um, whereas for me, and, and I can't speak for other people, but generally with this diagnosis, it's like we spike from the smallest thing that other, well, it appears small, but to us it's really big because we feel a lot. And um, then it will crash the other way up, down, um, within the span of like minutes sometimes, for me at least, within an hour, within a day. You have to be open and honest and communicate, whatever yeah, it is. That's... It's, it's like the it is what it is lane where it's like, if you're feeling whatever you're feeling, you just have to embrace it. I think everybody has certain traits that are borderline. Like I feel it's more of a spectrum as opposed to like a static label. Like, yeah, like I exactly the spectrum. I think is like you have to understand BPD, I guess, to really sort of understand the spectrum. So the core belief is that, and this is usually rooted in some sort of childhood trauma, um, where your primary provide caregiver who's like your mom or your dad or whoever took care of you as a, a little infant and child you for some reason felt that your needs like the things you needed whether it was food or attention or connection like anything like that whatever was your needs could not be met directly when you voice them and so that's your core belief going through life is if i ask for what i want if i ask for like hey can you come over like i want to hang out i might say something more extreme um, and be a little over dramatic. Rejection, you can't take rejection. You yeah, can't. rejection is no, really rejection painful. Yeah. Um, ultimately, I, it felt to me like conditional love. It felt like I needed to be a certain way in order to get love and the things that I needed really to survive. So those are all interconnected and led to me 
growing up and also really like lying and being deceptive and really wearing a mask of you know whatever society decides is success and like just being phony so with Abrar, he came into my life and I was like at a really bad time with drugs and my mental illness and he just, I don't know how to explain it. He's like, whatever you're feeling and what you're doing, I'm not going to make you feel bad about it. Just tell me, just be honest about it. And from being honest, it was terrifying because I literally was like, okay, I'm going to be totally honest with this guy and I'm going to watch him run the other direction and um, it'll just prove my theory, which is I am unlovable. When I was totally honest, he didn't run the other direction. And he was there and he met me where I was at and just sort of empathized and was like, that sounds so freaking hard. And we were constantly trying to figure out how to not like have him enable my illness because it is a manipulative, deceptive part of me which I like accept and I respect it because it's looking to help me ultimately. It wants me to feel better, even though it's not having the best effect long term. In the moment, that's been my coping mechanism. And Abrar just said, like, listen, even at your worst, I'm not running the other way. Like, you're still lovable. And so that unconditional love from him taught me that I am lovable, at, even at my worst. And so I started developing some unconditional self-worth. Next question. What are some ways your boyfriend can comfort you while you're going through hard feelings? That's a good question. I give you a hug. I'll just, mostly I try to like ask you Helps. all the time to be like, how are you feeling? And then if I can, if you want to talk about it, cause you can't really, if somebody's struggling, you can't fix anything. That's the first thing you have to understand. You can't, there's nothing to fix. And I don't want to be fixed. Yeah. And to say that we need to fix this, we need to problem solve, is to basically say, I'm not okay as I am. Mm. And you want to be, like, you're trying to change I need something. to be different in order for it to be, for me to sort of be acceptable. I have a question. Yeah. Um, I forgot it. No. Was there some part of you that was like, she might die and I might have to live through that? Oh yeah, of course, to be honest. But you had that faith deep down that that yeah. wasn't There's always happen. a risk, right? Like you can't, you don't know what's gonna happen. Like you, you have no idea because you have to come to the decision yourself. Because if you don't, if you come to that decision because of somebody else, then you're... Uh, Doing the same thing. You're basically going to come back to it because you haven't resolved it. Doing the same thing. If somebody thing. else resolves it for you, then it's not resolved. It's just a bottleneck that you've kind of taken care of. And then you're going to hit another bottleneck soon. Which you will anyway, but at least it won't be the same bottleneck. I was getting closer and closer, basically. So like... Yeah, if I did it for some other reason, other than me being like, I choose to live and choose to not live like that anymore. Well, it wasn't, I wasn't gonna last for very long, right? So I literally felt like I, I don't know, he just, he helped me to recognize that I had to do it for me. I had to be, he says, in the driver's seat. Give. I had to be empowered. Yeah, basically. Like, this is your my life, whole life. Your choice. I was so afraid to not be loved so I just showed the lovable parts which was a mask and that was killing me there's also part of you but like you only showed those parts you didn't show the other parts which were deep and tight and you're, you have to resolve it they come out yeah the good and the bad which isn't actually and bad the and the ugly yeah. and the hairy <laughs> <laughs> yeah my legs <laughs> yeah I completely agree just Demonstrating that he's not going in away anywhere, asking me what I need, not saying how can we fix this. Um, so yeah. exactly what he said. Okay, we're almost done-ish. Whoa. Okay, who's better at rock paper scissors? I don't know what that means. <laughs> he grew up in Pakistan. Yeah. Play rock paper scissors. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. I've never played it. All right. You've never played it. Two out of three. Rock paper scissors. Again. Rock paper scissors. Okay. One, one zero. Yeah. Well, there we He's go. better. <laughs> I'm also better at bowling. Yes, that's true. I can bowl with both hands, though. And darts with both arms. Um, bro, does she snore loud? <laughs> yes. Sometimes. Uh, yeah, sometimes. Sometimes if my nose is really messed up. There's like a... Have you ever been to those uh, concerts where trumpet, cello... <laughs> so she can kind of mimic that. It's like a... Concert. It's like an orchestra. Yeah. It's very, uh, it's very consistent, so you can fall asleep to it. 
but right. then he'll be in my ear quietly snoring and I'll be like, mm, you're snoring. Right. I'm like stealing the blankets. Two comforters. Yeah. We need to get another one. Um, how did you guys meet? So we answered that. Yep. <laughs> so I was going to do like a speech. Yeah, well, no, actually, I was thinking about doing this. Anyway. Yeah, say something. Not right. a speech. Thanks for asking questions. Yeah. And thank you for having <laughs> me here today. Take Thanks, care. guys. It was fun. And I hope you had fun. Subscribe. Did you have fun? Oh, yeah, I did. <laughs> Keep like commenting on my Instagram and let me know what you want me to talk about because this is fun. Bye! <laughs> yeah, that's the dishwasher. <laughs> it's okay.